Alexa, turn curtain off. Alexa, Alexa, turn curtain on. Currently, in displays, it's 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, Alexa. Today, you can expect showers with a high of 54 degrees and Useless. Today, we're going to look at a project I gave up on, a curtain robot. This all started because my wife always leaves the curtains open and it drives me crazy. I had some spare stepper motors laying around and I thought this would be pretty easy to automate and it definitely was not. Over the course of a couple months and many different designs, I finally came up with one that works and it still wasn't that great. Sometimes building things yourselves is just not worth the aggravation and it's better to just buy a product off the shelf. But as frustrating as it can be, at least you get to learn some new stuff along the way. I started this project with only a few basic requirements. I wanted Alexa control, which means we'll need an MCU that supports Wi-Fi like the ESP32. I wanted to still be able to manually operate it. This is a patio door that we use to come in and out of the house, just like our front door. So I don't want to have to ask Alexa to open the curtain every time I walk in the house. And I wanted it to automatically detect when it reaches the fully open or closed state so that I didn't have to play around too much with having to set how many steps it takes to reach one or the other. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because it just isn't a good design. You shouldn't build this. A stepper motor is not the right motor to use in this situation. The gearing is kind of wacky. The whole unit is kind of noisy because of the gears and it's really power hungry. But if you think you can improve on this design, the source code and all the project files are available on GitHub. The link will be in the description down below. This video is put together in pieces, so sometimes you might see the case as purple. It's the same as this white final version, except it's shorter and doesn't have space to hold the electronics in it. The basic idea is a stepper motor will drive some gears to turn a roller that will pull the whole unit back and forth across a curtain rod. We use a rotary encoder in the middle attached to one of the gears so we can determine what direction and how fast we are moving. This encoder is also the key part in determining when a user manually tries to open the curtain. By just giving the curtain a little tug in one direction or the other, the encoder will move slightly, which is interpreted as somebody trying to pull a curtain in one direction or the other, and the motors instantly take over from there. The two arms that sit on the side of the motor are there to apply some force to keep the unit from falling off the curtain rod and giving it, and giving it enough squeeze so that the top roller can really grip the rod. Since the main roller is printed in PLA, it has no grip strength, so I spray painted it with rubberized coating from Rust-Oleum just to give it some grip. And now for the electronics. I was waiting for another ESP32 board to deliver, so in the meantime I used an Arduino Nano to prototype. I'm using a double pole double throw relay with an NPN transistor to activate the relay, and also using a cheap stepper driver I had laying around from an old 3D printer. I'll explain why the relay is needed. This relay will cut off the two coils that are in the stepper motor basically fully disconnecting it from the, the rest of the circuit. And we need that because this has the ability for you to actually just manually pull it in one direction or the other. And by doing that, this top will spin. And if that happens fast enough, uh, the motor will act like a generator and start pumping voltage and current back through the driver and basically destroy it. Anybody who had a lot of the cheap 3D printers, if, if you pull an axis in one direction or the other very fast, you, you blew up these cheap A498 drivers. So to prevent that, I included this relay that acts in conjunction with the driver to just disconnect the motor. So before the motor's engaged, the relay is turned on, that connects all the coils back to the stepper driver, and then the stepper driver can run. And the way the code is written, once the, once the rotary encoder gets a couple of pulses across in one direction or the other, the software reads that and says, oh, somebody's trying to open or close, and it instantly engages the motor and takes over from there. So you're really, when you're opening and closing, you're just giving it a little tug, and then the machine comes to life and takes over for you. And in the case where the battery might die, you still have the ability to manually open and close your curtain very easily.
Once the ESP board arrived, I soldered up everything onto a piece of proto board with some headers so that I could keep it compact and neat. I also wired an 18650 cell to a charge board and a boost converter that'll drive the stepper motor. Again, this is a terrible way to do it. So now we'll take a quick look at the code. Um, you need to install the FOMO ESP library. This will handle all of the Alexa stuff. And it also requires async TCP library to be installed for its use. You can install these right from the Arduino uh, library manager. So we'll include our library files to use. These three lines you'll need to replace with your Wi-Fi SSID, your Wi-Fi password, and this is what you want to actually call the thing with Alexa. So I'm using curtain, so I can say Alexa open curtain but you can put any word you want in there. We set up the FOMO ESP object so we can use it later. And then just some basic variables and identify some pins we're going to be using on the board. Some things you'll see commented out are not yet implemented because I just basically stopped working on this project. So in the setup, we set our input pins with pull-ups for the encoder. We set up our output pins for driving the stepper motor and the relay. We make sure to disable the stepper motor on first startup by disabling the relay, which disconnects the motor, and also shutting down the uh, stepper motor driver. Serial is not really needed. I just use it for debugging, so you could comment this out. Capture the last encoder state. And here's where we kind of set up for all the Alexa stuff. FOMO sets up a web server on the ESP so that it can uh, receive commands from Amazon servers when you're making a call to Alexa. So this line here adds that virtual device. And we set up a callback with FOMO so that when an Alexa command is issued to Alexa and sent back to our ESP device, it will run through this routine. Now to actually set up the curtain robot as a known device on your Alexa, after you turn this guy on and your ESP is booted up, you just need to ask Alexa to discover new devices and she should pull this one in. That's really all there is to it. No need to create a specific app or anything on the uh, Alexa world. Just ask her to discover the device. FOMO kind of handles all the rest for you through its internal web server and adding your new device with whatever name you gave it. The Wi-Fi setup routine just connects the ESP to Wi-Fi. And of course, that's called first before we do anything with FOMO because FOMO, again, needs connection to the internet. And then we have, let's find the main loop. So in the main loop, we basically check to see did anything happen on the Alexa side. If it did, we'll call spinning the motor uh, routine. We'll get into that in a second. Check to see if the button is pressed on the encoder, which was for future implementation to be able to set some, some like start and end points that right now just blinks the LED. Um, and in the rest, we're basically checking to see if a user manually tried to tug the curtain. So if it detects that the curtain robot started to move a little bit in one direction or the other, it will automatically take over by engaging the motors. So it does that by continuously reading the encoder and checking for the state of the encoder to change. But not just change once, it counts a few times to make sure that it's not a false reading. Because in some cases, the wind blows and it shakes the thing a little bit, and that can set off a false reading. So we pull it a few times to see, yes, we're actually moving, and then the motors take over. But this happens so quickly that you really don't notice it. And if we did get some pulses through, but we never quite reached the threshold that we're looking for, we have a little bit of a timeout here that will reset the counters all back to zero and assume it was a false alarm. If we go up to the spin motor routine, this is where we actually drive the motor. Enable the relay so that we're making the winding connections from the stepper motor back to the actual stepper driver. Enable the stepper driver itself, and then we can start issuing pulses to it to start driving the stepper motors. 
but we're doing one key thing here while we drive the stepper motor. We're constantly checking the encoder state. So as the stepper motor is spinning, we're reading back in the encoder pulses to make sure that we're continuing to move forward. But if we get to a state where the encoder is no longer turning, we assume it reached the far end on one side or the other of the curtain and it can't physically move anymore. And we take that as a sign to stop. So that's how I'm getting around not having to set any hard-coded endpoints or run the motor for a specific amount of time. We're checking that the encoder is no longer spinning while the motor is trying to move and count that as we reach the end. So cut off the motor, we're done. And that will then disable the relay, cutting off the motor entirely from the circuit, turn off the stepper driver, and go back to a kind of listening state waiting for either an Alexa command or a user to manually pull. Now again, if your battery dies and the thing is just kind of dead hanging on, on the rail, you still can just manually pull your curtain open and close like you always would without causing any damage to the stepper driver because of the fact that the relay disconnects the windings from the stepper driver. So that's about it. I know I ran through this really quickly, but there's a lot of comments in this code. Pull it down from GitHub, read through it. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments below. Those of you that follow this channel know I try to answer as many questions as I can. All I ask is that you like and subscribe if you found this video interesting. So the real reason I gave up on this project, I moved. I don't have curtains anymore. Please support this channel and subscribe. Thanks for watching.